the second book of Moses, called Exodus, chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which come into Egypt, every man and his household come with Jacob, Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Jebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Neptali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that come out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king in Egypt, which knew not Joseph, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there fall, falleth, out of, falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them task, taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithon and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field, all their service, wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the names of the one was Sifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the, the stools, if it is a son, then ye shall kill him. And but if, it's, if it, but if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of the Egypt commanded them, but saved the, saved the, the, men, the men, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye, why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as Egyptian women, for they are lively, and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives. And the, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And the Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast unto the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Chapter 2 And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to a wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw him, that he was a godly child, she hid him three months. And when she, came, she could no longer hide him, she took him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed, and, and dabbed it with slime and with, pith, and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river brink the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would, what would be done to him. 
And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him. And she said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And the Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in these days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied on Egyptians smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that he did the wrong. Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendeth thou to kill me as thou killed the Egyptian? And Moses feared, and he said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priest of the Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to the water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are, ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of, the la out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? What, what, why is it that ye have left a man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. And she bore him a son, and he called, the, he called his name Gashom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in, in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed, by the reason of their bondage, and they cried, and their, and their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of, of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of, the, of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Herob. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire and out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and be, behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. And, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt? And when the Lord 
so that he turned aside to see God, called, called on to him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place therein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of of that land unto a good land with a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, I will send them, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto, unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, shall say unto them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name, and what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you, that this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together. And say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said I will bring unto you, I'll bring you up out of affliction, out of the affliction of Egypt, unto the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and they shall come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey unto the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that he will let you go. 
and and I will give this give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. For every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth into a house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Chapter 4 And Moses answered and, and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is it that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord saith furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand unto thy bosom. And he put his hand unto his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thy hand unto thy bosom again. And he put his hand unto his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the later sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also thee, this, two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take off the water of the river, and pour it, pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto, unto the Lord, O my God, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And, this, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb or the deaf, or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou, what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, I am not Aaron, the Levite, thy brother. I know that he, he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with, with I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what he shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt to him thou and thou shalt be to him instead of God, and thou shalt take his, this rod into thine hand, and wherewith thou shalt do, do signs. And Moses went and returned to Jethro his father-in-law and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, 
For all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass. And he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return unto Egypt, see that thou do all these. Wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will not but I will harden his heart, as he shall not let my people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus say saith the Lord Israel, my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me, and if thou refuse to let him go, behold. I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go and then he said, a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mount of God and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, when they bowed their heads and worshipped.